Hi, this is David at Mash IT, and after a long wait, we have finally got the Alienware X15 in the office. I know we've been asked again and again and again, this has been ordered for ages. So tonight we're going to do a quick unboxing and first impressions, and then we'll have a few days worth of hands on, and then we're going to come back with a review. So let's get it open. Straight away, you can notice that the box is much smaller than the previous X17 that we received. So let's open it up. So inside, we, again, we've got the nice laptop box, the Alienware laptop box, a nice touch. And inside, we have a power cable. We've got the new 240 watt Alienware power adapter, a much nicer size than the previous huge 240 watt brick. Uh, we'll compare those later on. And what's this? This is different to the 17. What have we got in here? Oh, this is nice. We have also got an USB-C to RJ45 adapter, because obviously being the very slim 15-inch uh, laptop, we don't get an actual Ethernet port on there. And also, I don't know if you can see this, we've got a nice Alienhead logo on this adapter. That's a really nice touch. Certainly a better unboxing experience than the old days. Um, I think that's it for that box. Okay. Let's open the next one. Like that. So again, we've got a nice magnetic closing box with a laptop inside. Very nice. Little flap so I can lift the laptop out. It's quite solid feeling, considering how small and compact it is. And inside the box, we have also got a little Alienware welcome note. The much sought after Alienware stickers uh, and a very small pamphlet and safety information. So there we go. Very similar to the 17 inch unboxing. And as per the 17 inch, you've got a nice magnetic closing box. And it's only a silly little thing, but it's a really nice touch. So if you want to keep this, it does keep it nice for future. Right, I'm going to push that out of the way. And I'm going to open up actual laptop itself. So again, as I mentioned on the Alienware 17, they are wrapped in cellophane, which is nice. It's not quite as easy to get into as a, an Apple. It's not quite an Apple unboxing experience, but it is pretty good. Certainly improved things. So here we go. So this is the Alienware 15 15 inch gaming laptop, the new 2021 slim and light model. You'll notice now, we've, Luna Light is the one color that we have. It's come with a nice, looks like dirty fingerprint on there. I'll have to clean that off in a minute. It feels incredibly sort of hefty, but solid, which is quite nice. The whole outside is a Luna Light finish, but the inside is a dark side finish. So if I open it up, you can see all the bezel, the actual deck and the keyboard are the dark side of the moon color. So this is a two-tone color design with this new 15-inch uh, range. And it is the only color choice you get with this new model. So if you don't like it, unfortunately, you are now out of luck. Before you had two different colors to choose from, now we just get the same two-tone design. Now looking around the laptop, on the top, you've got the usual 15 embossed sort of logo to tell you that you've got an Alienware 15, the lit Alienware head. And if we look on the left side, this is something that's very different from the last year, the M17 or the M15 range. This is very different from the M15 range. We've now got a power jack on this side and the rest of it is just all vents to let all this heat out of this slim laptop. And if we go into the right side, we've got a headset jack and again, all venting. All of the ports pretty much are now at the rear. So if we go to the back of the laptop, We've got a USB 3.1 port. We have got a Thunderbolt 4 port with power delivery. We've got a micro SD card slot. We've got a USB-C port 
and we've got an HDMI 2.1 port and that is it. So they've definitely cut down the ports on this model. And my biggest concern, just by looking at these ports so far, well, there's two little concerns I've got with it, is firstly, only one USB 3 port. I think that's a bit of a shame, because instantly I'll know I'll put like a mouse dongle or something in there, and that's all my USB ports used up. So then I'm gonna be using dongles in one of the USB Cs. Bit of a shame there, but you know, that's what you get with these slim and light laptops. The other, Slight, slight niggle with this new design is the fact that you've got no USB-C's or USB's on either side. So whenever you are going to be wanting to plug things in and out, you're leaning over the back of the laptop, fumbling around trying to find it. And another viewer pointed out in the, the last review that we did for the 17 inch is the fact that this 15 inch is not very symmetrical with these ports on the back. It's not something I really noticed, but you can sort of see by the, sort of the layout of the ports, it does just seems like it's been sort of just thrown on the back there. But other than that, it's a really solid, nice looking laptop. Uh, it feels very premium. On the bottom, you've got the usual sort of honeycomb sort of grill for air intake. Uh, and you've also got these sort of grills at the side. I'm pretty sure that'll be some air intake, but also the speakers by the looks of it. There's nothing on the front of this model that there is on the 17. Opening it up again, We've got air intakes on either side of the keyboard, as well as some air intakes at the top. Unfortunately, none of those are speaker grills. That is a real shame. The keyboard is the new style like we had on the M15R5. It's got the same feel as the M15 and M17 keyboard, but it's got this new layout. And this isn't something I'm a big fan of. We've got media keys on the far right of the keyboard, and yes, it's handy having dedicated sort of volume buttons, but what I don't like is it's right next to the enter key, and I find it very easy when you're typing to accidentally hit one of the media keys instead of the enter. And my biggest gripe is the fact with the cursor keys, they've just been sort of pushed into the keyboard and they've shoved the shift up, and I find it very easy, I'll accidentally hit the up arrow key rather than the shift. And that's something I'm not a fan of. It's very much like the old razor blade style, something that I don't particularly like. Another thing, another point of note is the secondary functions are not lit on these keyboards. And I think for a flagship product, that's a real shame because the old M15 range, the secondary and the, you know, the primary functions were all lit on their keyboards. So let's fire it up and then let's take a quick look at this machine once we've booted into Windows. Okay, so we've just got through Windows setup. We've been just sort of tweaking the system a bit to our liking. And uh, the good news is, so far, the keyboard hasn't heated up. The fans, when the system is very cool, don't turn on at all. And as the system heats up, because you're installing programs, it comes on very quietly and it's hardly noticeable. Only when we're running uh, just a quick benchmark on Geekbench, did you actually hear the fan spin up to a reasonable level. Talking of which, I did one test of Geekbench 5 CPU just to check the memory, see what we're running in here. And the good news is, uh, looking at this score here, we're getting 1,535 for the single core and 8,323 for the multi-core, which is better than the X17 with a 16 gigabyte of high density RAM, which leads me to believe that this has got the low density, and as it, I believe it's sold on, we're gonna look in a minute, that's obviously a massive plus. So good news here, this is just the 16 gigabyte of RAM in this model. Talking of the specs, in this model, we've got the i7-11800H CPU. We've also got the RTX 3060, as I said, 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. As with the X17 we've looked at last week, we've got the perky lighting, and we've got it currently on the Rainbow Wave, which I do think looks nice. As I mentioned earlier on as well, only the actual primary functions and keys are lit, so the secondary functions are not lit, and that is a bit of a shame. With regards to the speakers, they are definitely not as good as the X17. They're very average. Let's do a very quick audio check. It's at 40%. So they sound okay, very little bass, little bit tinny, bit of a shame really, I was hoping the speakers would be the same as the X17, but I think obviously, but in this more compact chassis, they haven't been able to give that same level of sound that you get with the X17. Okay, so let's just quickly check the weights on this model. So 
So that's 2.296 kilograms. I say 2.3 kilograms for this model. Quite heavy for a slim 15 inch laptop, but I say it's very rugged and it feels incredibly solid. So we just quickly compare it to the 17 inch so you can see the difference in size. So the X15 is here, here is the X17. You can see it is a fair amount thinner. And if I pop it on top to show you the size difference between the 15 inch and the 17 inch, It's definitely a lot more compact than the 17 inch. And if I just whiz it around to the back, you can just quickly see that obviously we are losing ports as well by taking the 15 inch over the 17 inch. Right, so we're gonna open it up now and take a quick look inside. Right, so we're gonna take the bottom panel off. Uh, with this Alienware X15, it's got six screws underneath holding the panel down. The rear two come straight out, the other four are captive. And the nice thing is, as you unscrew the front two screws, it automatically pops up the panel in the corner, making it easier to open. So rather than have to sort of you know, jam things in and pry up, just by unscrewing it, it's gonna help you get in there. It is quite tight, but as you can see, if I'm putting my spudger across, it's opening up quite nicely. There we go. And we just lift it away. Let's take a look inside. Right, so inside the Alienware X15, you can see straight away we've, we've got an 87 watt hour battery. We'll be testing that in the full review. We've got a Wi-Fi card that is socketed, so that can be changed. And you'll notice that the SSD1 is here, is populated with a heatsink, and SSD2 is right next to it, and there's even a screw in the slot ready to go if you buy yourself a second SSD. Obviously, you're gonna have to find yourself the actual heatsink to go on there, they don't supply that but that's quite standard with Dell. Now, other thing you'll notice, especially if you've watched the X17, there's no RAM slots on this model. Being that it's much thinner than the X17, they have soldered the RAM on. So make sure if you're buying an X15, you configure it with the amount of RAM that you need because you cannot add it later. Also, notice the four fans with the new design of these X15s. Uh, we will be testing the sort of the thermals out with this laptop in the full review and uh, Lastly, point of note, the motherboard is flipped, so if you do wish to repaste it, unfortunately you will have to remove the entire motherboard to flip it over and remove the heatsink. But fingers crossed, with this new uh, cooling solution, we shouldn't need to do that anyway. And uh, just before I close this back up, last thing I want to note is the actual down firing speakers. Right, so that brings us to the end of this unboxing and first impressions. Hopefully you like what you see with this X15. If you've got any questions about this model, please pop them in the comment section down below and I'll try and answer them if I can. And I also might give you some ideas to put things into the full review. We will get some more hands-on time over this weekend and we'll be looking to do the review probably Monday or Tuesday. So make sure you're subscribed if you wish to see that. Thank you for watching.